questioned him. He said, everything that I've done, I've done in the temple, out in everywhere, out in the open. I've kept nothing secret. And so there, the Christian faith isn't a kind of secret organization and, uh, you know, and these sort of things where there's hidden knowledge. Jesus said, everything I've done, I've done out, out in the open. And yet, the way that the Bible was written, there were things that were a mystery at one time and then revealed over time. And the Bible calls those mysteries, not because uh, they were hidden things that we have to kind of align our chakras to find out, right? But have I used that here on Wednesday? I feel like I said that on Wednesday night. I have a preoccupation with New Age stuff, I guess, later. But uh, we need to... There are mysteries in the sense that they were hidden at that time, but now they're revealed. When Paul yes, talks about the gospel, he said, this is the mystery of the gospel, that, that Christ came into the world and He died and He, he rose from the grave. And so uh, you can get hints of it. If you just had your Old Testament, you could read and you could see hints of that. There's going to be a Messiah. Oh, he's going to be, if you read Isaiah, you say, well, this is going to be a suffering servant. Uh, this is someone who is going to uh, be rejected. And you can piece together these things, but as you can see, when Jesus came to the scene, his own disciples didn't understand what he was going to do and the, and the magnitude of his ministry. So, I, I want today's message is called The Secret of Wisdom, but I, don't, I, I want to be real crystal clear when I teach this. I'm not trying to hawk my latest book or try to give you something that's secret in the sense of I, I have something that God has only revealed to me. That's not that's not our purpose. But I, I feel like there's something really neat in here that uh, we, we need to look at together. So if you ever copy God's Word, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. And what you will find there is a lot of things that are familiar, that you feel like you've read a lot. And the repetition of these Wisdom poems are intentional to help instruct us and help get repetition helps us learn concepts and principles. So uh, th this may be repetitive, and the introduction really is similar to what we've heard before. It introduces itself in a uh, in a very familiar way. Once again, we're going to see wisdom personified in, in a female way, as a as a woman. Uh, and so if if you know, you, you wonder, should I think highly of women or not? Well, the Bible, when they go to personify women, it ain't a man, okay? It's, it's, it's a woman, right? And so that should at least be somewhat flattering. And so we see wisdom personified once again. It's a, and and we see, we've seen these um, principles before. We see that wisdom is accessible. It says, does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding grace or voice she wants to be found on. We see that it's concrete. It says, all of the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. And right there, if I just take a pause, the Bible has a clear right and wrong. It isn't a subjective kind of, you know, hey, whatever goes or whatever the culture says or just whatever's right in the moment. Uh, the Bible has things that are wise and foolish, things that are right and wrong, and bids you to find those things and, and those eternal things and apply those to situations that are sometimes complex. So it's accessible, it's concrete, it's also valuable. It says, wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with her. Also look at verse 13 in Proverbs chapter 8. It says, it gives us a, a nice thing. I just skip to the next thing. But it said, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. And there again, we kind of see that Proverbs paradigm where wisdom begins with a relationship that changes our heart and the things that we love and the things that we hate. And then the closer you get to Christ, the more that you will detest your sin, not yourself, but your sin that you do. And it's not a matter of just shame and feeling more and more shame and guilt for who you are. It, it's more and more being distanced from the old self and uh, feeling, feeling distance from that individual. So I want you to see that. I want you to see something real neat in uh, the middle of this chapter here. And it's how the secret of wisdom is really the shadow of Jesus. And it says this. It says, um, well, I want, you, I, want, I want to point this out first. Ask yourself, does the book of Proverbs point to Jesus? Well, I think it does. Because I think all of Scripture points to Jesus. When Jesus was resurrected, he appeared to two of his disciples and on the road to Emmaus. And he points out to them how all the scriptures testify of himself. It says, And beginning with Moses and the prophets, he, that's Jesus, interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Man, that's, 
That's a Bible study I want to be in on, right? That, that's a lot more valuable than this Bible study, right? I want to be on the Bible study where Jesus goes through the scriptures and tells how it's all about him. Uh, that's a neat thing. And so I think if all scripture points to Jesus, then the book of Proverbs points to Jesus and to, as well. And so I want to I want to look at verses 22 through 31 in Proverbs chapter 8. So again, we have the book of Proverbs using a poetic device to talk about wisdom. Wisdom is not a divine being that is like separate from God. Uh, no, nowhere in the Bible does it teach that. And, and yet you can take a verse out of context and go, okay, now the, the book of Proverbs is saying that wisdom is some kind of being that was with God. And, and actually, there have been whole groups. Of course, you can find a group that's clung on to anything like this, but there's whole groups that have come out with like a Sophia doctrine. Sophia is uh, the Greek word for wisdom. And so uh, that's where we get the, 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 the girl's name, right? And uh, that Sophia is some sort of goddess that we need to... Uh, pray to. She's a, she's a goddess of wisdom. That's not what the Bible ever teaches. The Lord says, the Lord God is one. Right? That's the, that was the commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. Why? Because there are no other ones. And so there is only the God of the Bible. So, yet we do have this, this poem, right? And here I believe we see a shadow of Jesus. Let me explain why. And I think that you'll, you'll see it. I think in Jesus we find the personification of all wisdom and all the attributes of God. So let me show you how this wisdom poem points to a greater reality in Jesus. I think it's kind of neat, right? Uh, Proverbs 8 says, The Lord brought me, this is wisdom, forth as the first of his works, before his deeds of old. I was formed long ago at the beginning when the world came to be. Now compare that, now, now stay with me now. Compare that to John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, was the word. Now here we see, before you go any further, you see a great distinction, don't you? And it's that uh, the wisdom in the poem is a created being at the beginning. Now it would be a great heresy, a heresy that the church has struck down at the very beginning called Arianism, to believe that Jesus was a created being. Uh, the Bible does not teach that. The Bible teaches that the, the triune God was coexistent before all of eternity, before the world was created. Uh, God this triune God existed, right? So Jesus was not a created being. He isn't uh, Michael the Archangel, as our Jehovah's Witness friends say. Uh, it, it isn't these things, right? And so there's a great distinction, and yet we have wisdom in the beginning and the Word in the beginning. That's, that's the comparison that I want you to see here. And so uh, wisdom, this wisdom in Proverbs chapter 8 and Jesus are not the same thing. They're not talking about the same thing, but one points to the other. One is a, a weak dim shadow compared to the, the true fulfillment in Jesus. And so we have, we have this, right? And, and in John chapter 1, it's the word, and that Greek word is logos. And, and that's drawing from this Greek concept of the manifestation of all logic, order, and wisdom. Isn't that interesting? And so it's kind of a neat comparison. Later on, of course, the word is Jesus, who existed before the world came into being. Uh, as the eternal person of the Trinity, he, uh, Jesus says it in John 17, 5, just to clear off any confusion. He says, And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. So, just to make it crystal clear so no one thinks I'm heretic, right? Jesus existed before the world began, and the triune God existed before the world began, all together, right? Uh, in Proverbs, we see a, this wisdom idea, which was before the world was created, but it is a created being, okay? One points to the other. There are similarities, but they're not the same, okay? Uh, but you can't help but know the New Testament and read back and go, wow, uh, this, this is a faint shadow of the other thing, okay? So let's take a look at this. The rest of Proverbs 8, that section there, mirrors the creation count of Genesis chapter 1. Uh, and so we're going to circle back to that. But what you need to know is Jesus is more than a poetic device. He and his gospel are truly the manifestation of wisdom of God. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. It says, and 30, it says, But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. And because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And so this, this aspect of 
Here was a poem in Proverbs 8, but Jesus is the true manifestation of wisdom. Uh, Jesus is flesh and blood. He's not a poetic personification. He really is the manifestation of all wisdom. And so it's kind of a neat thing to see. Look at verse 30 and 31 of Proverbs 8. I'm reading out of the ESV translation here. It says, Then I was beside him, this is wisdom, like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. Isn't that kind of a, a, like a wondrous, neat kind of thought, right? Isn't that kind of unique? Uh, God was with this wisdom, right? Wisdom was beside God, active in the process of creation. Look at John chapter 1 again. And it says, And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. That's the, that's the important distinction, right? And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. And so the Word was formed, the world was formed by God's wisdom. And that's what we see in Proverbs chapter 8. Out of nothing, everything came. The Latin says ex nihilo. Whenever you talk about that, preachers have to say those two words to make themselves uh, self sound smart. And so, and, and when, Jesus, when God makes the world, what does he do? It says that he spoke and the world came into being. In other words, he used a word. And so I just think that there's so many connections here that it's almost dizzying to, to me, right? And so he uses a word to create. Uh, the, the Bible in the New Testament says Jesus, through all things, were created. And, and also refers to him as the word. And so it's kind of an amazing, I don't know, it's just kind of an amazing thing where there's all of these connections. And so when we live by God's wisdom in the way of Christ, we're, we're tapping into the same knowledge, the order which with, with which the universe was created. And so I think that, that that's something amazing that God created the universe by wisdom, and He bids you to understand that same wisdom, and understand the wisdom of God, and, and live accordingly, right? Uh, it says in Proverbs chapter 8, wisdom delights in creation, just as God looked at creation and says, it is very good, right? And, and so it's an amazing thing. Jesus is not a created being or a poetic idea, but one points to the other. Jesus is this uncreated, existing eternally with the Father. He's the fulfillment of every poetic idea uh, concerning God's wisdom. And then look at this passage. It says, Long ago, in Hebrews chapter 1, and many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Just an amazing statement about who Jesus is. And the radiance of the glory of Jesus shines on every page of the book of Hebrews, right? And then it concludes, the section concludes in a way that is familiar with us as well. Uh, it, it talks about the, the blessings of following wisdom and the curses of denying wisdom. It says, listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. And, and so if you want to be wise tonight, you need to show up at the schoolhouse, right? You need to get to work. You need to show up at the door. He says, listen... You know, come to the house and learn wisdom, right? My son, Ben, he's taking an interest in bass guitar now. We have a studio where we keep all of the instruments. And there's a saying sometimes with musicians that in order to get good, you have to get into the workshop, right? you got to get into the shed and, and pound out those scales and pound out those notes and get that stuff going. And I'm going to tell you, I feel a sense of pride when Ben gets into the studio and closes the door. I can hear him grinding out some notes, right? And right now they sound a little um, like flatulence, right? I mean, it's a bass guitar and it's a little bit, uh, you know, different and out of tune. But man, he's getting it and he's experimenting with it and it's, it's, it's awesome, right? If you want to get wisdom, just like a musician has to get in there and play the scales and learn their sharps and flats and... Learn the circle of fifths and all these things. In order to get wisdom, you have to get into the workshop. And you have to learn wisdom. You have to live out life according to that wisdom and practice it out, right? So let's put it together. Jesus is the Word, okay? 
He existed before the world began. The triune God existed in three persons before the world ever began. And all the scriptures testify of who Jesus is. Right? And he's the manifestation of God's wisdom. Well, Proverbs 8 talks about a created poetic being. It's a dim shadow of, of who Jesus really is when he's the true manifestation of who of, of all of God's wisdom. In order to get that wisdom, you have to pursue it, and you have to get into the workshop by reading his book. This is really my, my theme for tonight. And then I want to share this, this great passage with you. It says, For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you, and for those in Laodicea, and for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Jesus are revealed all of God's wisdom. All of God's knowledge, the way is shown by the model, the work, uh, the mission, the purpose of Jesus in His gospel. And so start with a relationship with Him and allow Him to wash your heart and to teach you His ways and to follow His path. And then you'll be walking in the wisdom on which the whole earth was found. I think it's pretty deep. I don't know. Okay, so after I uh, cut these guys off, you guys will tell me if that's heresy or not. And so I don't, I don't think it was. And so, uh, but yet, I, I just, it's one of those things you've got to be crystal clear on because I think I could be misunderstood. And there's all sorts of cults that are built on, well, Jesus was really the, not really archangel, or he was really uh, this created being. That's not what I'm saying at all. I just think that Proverbs 8 points to Jesus, just like all scripture points to Jesus. That's all I'm saying. So let me pray, and I'm going to boot these guys up kind of short tonight. That's okay. And uh, then we'll carry on. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your Christ and our Savior. And Father, that every word points to him. And, and Lord, I just believe that in the way that it talks about wisdom, it, it's a shadow of the true flesh and blood personification of your wisdom, O oh Lord. And Father, we delight that you were in the beginning and that Jesus was with God and Jesus is God. And Father, we thank you that, that he is not dead, that he's alive. And Lord, we tap into his way and his wisdom as we seek to, to follow his way. And we know Lord, that that begins just simply with a faith relationship by turning from the sin of our old life and turning in faith to follow the way of Jesus. Uh, I pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all have a great week that are watching, and you guys stay with me.